Well, we have another trick up our sleeves. Let's switch this flag on. Run the test now. And oh my, we have 62 tests. 62 tests where we started with just two. What happened? Where did the extra 60 tests come from? Let's deep dive into the tests a little bit. So the first test is the one that we are familiar with. Gadget 10. Great. And let's take another one. So here. What's happening here? Food 10. Where did that come from? I'll request a consumer might send food, but this wasn't part of the original test data. Let's try another one. Hmm. Book. Page size 10. Or what about this one? Food. Null this time, which is valid. Page size may be null. Remember, it was nullable. None of these were part of the original examples that were used as test data. And even look at this one. Type food, but this time there's no parameter at all. So what Specmatic's doing is, it's taking the test data and using it to generate all the sorts of requests that a consumer might send. So that even if the test data doesn't really test a particular valid combination, you switch this flag on and that combination will be tested. And if the contract test passes, then you can be sure that the uh, application can handle that request. And in fact, we go even a step further. Right? These are all the positive scenarios, as you can see on the left-hand side. There are tags for each test, uh, tagging them as positive, but you scroll a little bit further down and you see negative scenarios. What are we talking about here? Look at this. Request argument type, which was formerly an enum with all of these kinds of values, is being mutated to null. Well, type was not supposed to be nullable. Uh, in the specification, if you if you look at it, product type has an exclamation, which means you can't send a null. But what happens if we do? The application shouldn't handle it, right? This wouldn't be helpful for the application to handle this. The application is supposed to return some sort of error because you need to pass a type per the spec when you're calling find available products. Well, it does, which is great. The test passes. And there are many other such types of uh, mutations. So here, uh, for example, the in new product, when you're creating a product, the name uh, is not supposed to be null, but here we are sending a name as null. What happens? The application is supposed to return errors. It does, which is great. Of course, if the application handles any of these successfully for any reason, uh, the test would fail. But 62 tests generated from the specification for free. These tests represent all the kinds of requests that consumers might send to the GraphQL application, and even those that the consumer should not. And this is resiliency testing. If all of these contract tests pass, it means the application is resilient. And it means that the application can handle any request that consumers might throw at it.